السلام علیکم میرا نام ڈاکٹر نجیب سمرو ہے پیپل کال می ناج سمرو ان آسٹریلیا آئی بین لیونگ ہیئر فار اباؤٹ سیون ایئرس اینڈ دس ویڈیو از گوئنگ ٹو بی ہاؤ ٹو پاس اے ایم سی ون وچ از دا اے ایم سی ایم سی کیو اور رائٹ سو بفور آئی اسٹارٹ اٹ آف آئی ٹیل یو مائی اسٹوری وچ از این انٹرسٹنگ ون اینڈ دین مے بی دس ول گیو یو سم موٹیویشن ٹو گیٹ دس ڈن سو آئی گریجویٹیڈ ان ٹو تھاؤزنڈ نائن ٹو تھاؤزنڈ الیون میں میں آسٹریلیا آیا میں نے ماسٹرس پبلک ہیلتھ کیا پھر پی ایچ ڈی کیا فور سو فار اباؤٹ سکس ایئرس آئی ڈیڈ ناٹ اسٹڈی اینی میڈیسن رائٹ تو میرے چھ سال کا گیپ تھا ون ڈے آئی واز سٹنگ ود اے گروپ آف فرینڈس مطلب کلوز فرینڈس نہیں تھے ایسے فرینڈس آف فرینڈس اینڈ سم بڈی آسمی فار میڈیکل ایڈوائز تو آسٹریلین لڑکے تھے تو ان کے ساتھ میں بیٹھا ہوا تھا میں نے کسی کو میڈیکل ایڈوائز دی کسی پرٹیکولر ٹاپک کے اوپر تو اس نے کہا ایک بار لڑکے نے کہا کہ ڈونٹ لسن ٹو ہم ہی از اے فیک ڈاکٹر ایز فرام پاکستان ہی ہیز ان گاٹ اے رجسٹریشن دیٹ پوائنٹ پنڈ می دیٹ پوائنٹ آف ٹائم آئی ڈسائڈیڈ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈو دس ایگزام اینڈ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو گیٹ مائی سیلف رجسٹرڈ ان آسٹریلیا ایز اے میڈیکل ڈاکٹر سو ہیئر از مائی اسٹوری نا آئی اسٹارٹ آف پریپیئرنگ فار اے ایم سی میں نے کچھ لوگوں سے بات کی مجھے لوگوں نے بتایا کہ بھائی اے ایم سی کے پارٹ ون تو بہت آسان ہوتا ہے پارٹ ون کے اندر آپ کو بس یہ ہے کہ آپ ریکالس کر کے چلے جاؤ وہی ریکالس ریپیٹ ہوتے ہیں اینڈ یو ول پاس دا ایگزام سو آئی ہیڈ نو ڈاؤٹ ان دیٹ پیپل ہیو پاس اٹ لائک دیٹ سو آئی اسٹارٹ اٹ ڈوئنگ دیٹ تو میرا فرسٹ اٹیمپٹ میں نے کوئی تین مہینے دبا کے ریکالس کیے پچھلے چھ سات آٹھ مہینے کے آئی ڈیڈ آل دا ریکالس اینڈ وین آئی سیٹ دا ایگزام آئی ہارڈلی گاٹ فائیو ریکالس سو ریکالس آر بیسکلی کوشچنس وچ پیپل رائٹ جب وہ ایگزام دے کے آتے ہیں تو دے because you can't take the questions out anyhow i failed the exam the first first exam however i sort of looked back and tried to think about it and i did the exam again and this time i took another three months studied again or other recalls ke pichle do saal ke recalls karke ke maine kaha is part to pass ho hi jaunga i set the exam and i got no recalls and i failed the exam again Then I decided I'm not going to do this. I'm going to understand this exam, figure out what this exam is about, and then take an attempt. All right. So this is how the exam looks like. So if you're taking the AMC exam for the first time, let me give you some stats on it. Number one, you'll get uh, 150 questions. Out of these 150 questions, 120 are marked. 30 of them... are actually unmarked questions, which are just trial questions, but you don't know which questions are those. However, out of the 150 questions, the last 30 questions are 100% marked. If you, do, if you don't understand this, just rewind it and listen to me again, you will understand this. Anyhow, so 120 questions are marked. The marking is, in my understanding, it's from 400 marks in total. So that means which questions teen mark ke hote hain, which questions char mark ke hote hain, which questions paanch mark ke hote hain. We don't know which questions are what and how much weightage they have. Certain questions are low, easy questions. Other questions are high questions, which are called mastery questions. They have a higher weightage. All right. So that's about the structure. You get about, um, I think from memory, it's about 210 minutes. So 210 minutes is roughly... about three and a half hours to do these questions, which essentially calculates to about 70 to 80 seconds per question. So you get a long question, you've got 70 to 80 seconds to solve that, and then you move to the next question. If you want, you can take more time on one question, but the issue is that you'll miss out on the last questions, which are 100% marked. So you have to be quite fast. All right. So that was no- number one. Uh, number two in the AMC if you look at the results uh, they're consistently about 60% people pass some some times it's 58% sometimes it's 65% but they're generally around 60% 60% of the candidates pass all the time so I started thinking to myself why do always 60% candidate pass why not sometimes uh, 10% people pass because the exam can be difficult or why not 90% of the candidates pass because sometimes they are very good candidates. So uh, 
when i started thinking about that i figured out ke i talked to a lot of lot of people who have passed the exam or sat the exams with me so i figured out this is how the exam works 60% of the people will get recall questions whereas the rest of the 40% of the people and these are approximate figures will not get any recalls or get very few recalls now if you it's like playing a lottery so if you have done recalls and you are in those 60% then bang you'll pass the exam but there's a likelihood there's a 40% chance that you'll not fall in that category and if you just rely on recalls you'll fail the exam and that is what happened to me twice so this is how i started preparing for the exam in the exam there are certain questions called the mastery questions which means that even if you do the exam really well agar aapne wo questions fail kar diye then you'll fail the exam and most times and in my opinion almost 99% of these questions are emergency medicine questions which means that you're dealing with a life and death situation and if you don't make the right choice the patient is going to die if you don't make the right choice in the exam most likely you'll also die which means that you'll lose or you'll fail so so what i did is i thought to myself i have to first conquer these questions get these questions nail them down before i can move ahead and do any other thing so i started doing something called the case files which are which is called usml case files so if you write that down you'll find that book now i did case files emergency medicine usmly if you google that you'll find that book i did all these cases so it has got about 60 odd medical emergency cases and those are very relevant like most of the times you'll get similar cases in the exam so do that um once you've done the case files then you at least you're sure that aapke emergency medicine ke question jo mastery questions hai high scoring questions wo kabhi galat nahi honge okay So you do that. Then what I what I did is I did the blue book. So they have a blue book. Uh, the AMC guys, um, whoever is doing it, you'll, you'll find out. It's called the AMC MCQ book. So it's the generic main book of AM, AMC. So I started doing the blue book. Now I recommend doing the blue book at least three times. Because what they do is they pick questions from the blue book but change them a little bit. So when you do those questions, understand the logic. understand each and every option because what they will do in the exam they'll flip the question around flip the options around and they'll give you a similar sort of topic so if you understand the topic real well you will smash the question so do the blue book and do the blue book three times and do all the topics of the blue book from a textbook now people say they do jm jm is a good book but it's a very big book and it's difficult to retain So I passed the AMC after seven years without doing JM. I did read a few topics of from JM, only the ones from the Blue Book, because JM, remember, it's a five-year-old book and it's it's a bit obsolete book as well. But however, I did a lot of things from uh, guidelines, so RACGP guidelines, RCH guidelines, RACOG guidelines, which is for gynecology. Anyway, I'll share the description at the bottom. and i had a study plan where i was doing 4 hours a day so 4 hours a day one hour emergency medicine which is basically the case files one hour past papers one hour of blue book and one hour of code reading and guideline stuff so if i did that for another 3 months and i set the exam and i smashed the exam so i got top marks in the top 25% and didn't worry about the recalls i did get a few recalls about 15 20% of them maybe a little bit more but this time geez i had good practice i was on the ball so i was able to do that now read the uh, my comments in the description for any additional things that you that you would like how to prepare so in a nutshell don't read the whole jm don't worry about that just follow what i've written down in the comments and uh, don't waste too much time on the recalls you may get or you may not get so just do 3 months of recalls 4 months of recalls at max and don't worry about incomplete questions in the recalls because in the exam you may get a totally different stem because recall is a recall all right and for recalls the best way to do it is joining the emedex page and you can do it from there 
in terms of an online site so you can join amc q bank or im educate or for that matter any other site maybe bmj best practice uh, these sites are just to give you practice of how to click questions in the exam time management skills doing questions upon questions because one of the mistakes i made was that i didn't have a stamina to sit in the exam for three and a half hours i met two hours after that tired ho jata tha second exam mein mere sath ye hua tha ki 2 ghante ke baad my mind was not working so i didn't practice in 3 hour blocks so for my last exam i started practicing in 3 hour 3 and a half hour blocks one month before the exam i was only practicing in 3 hour blocks so that way i was tuned the lasting 3 hours within the exam and delivering my best effort so that's another very important tip time management is very important i i was adamant that i'll finish every question in 60 seconds so that gives me a lot of extra time at the end now in terms of choosing your venue so this is my strategy in my opinion my research jo amc ka success rate hai passing ka wo foreign venues mein zyada hai as compared to australian venues so when you choose your exam i recommend you doing it at the foreign well venue i did either go manila i know it's difficult to get there but it has a very high success rate so i did do it in manila or do it in bangkok um the 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 center which is not very popular probably has the highest rate of success in australia rates of success are very low like i man a bahut sare logon se pucha hai jinhone mere sath exam diya and most people fail in australia all right uh, people pass as well don't get me wrong but the success rate is higher so you do that and uh, the final point that i would like to conclude this is that don't give up so you can fail once you can fail twice take my example i failed i failed twice and i passed it on the third attempt so if i can do it after a six year gap anybody can do this exam all right if you have any questions just leave them as a comment i'll endeavor to answer them and uh, good luck bye